So as you may know, I am doing a series on the Commodore Plus 4. And what I'm doing is taking the user's manual and working chapter by chapter so that I can become familiar with the Plus 4. I had owned a VIC-20, Commodore 64, 128, and Amiga, but I was unfamiliar with this Plus 4 that really wasn't that popular. But what I'm finding is I dive into it. It's a very unique computer and very misunderstood. Well, along the way, I've covered chapters 1 and 2 in the user's manual, and I'm getting ready to come up on chapter 3. And chapter three was going to require me to have some um, storage devices like a tape, uh, tape drive or a floppy disk drive. And I have right here, if I can lift this thing, I have an old 1541 right here. It is um, kind of dirty, kind of probably needs some work and clean up. And honestly, I don't even know if it works. Uh, and I would hate to connect it to this plus four right now without testing. So what I did is I did a little research online and of course there are some devices that will allow you to use uh, micro SD cards or SD cards to simulate a floppy and those are called SDIEC devices. But what I wanted to do was a cycle accurate device called the Pi 1541 and this is an open source platform that you can use a Raspberry Pi and you can create a cycle accurate 1541 with programs on an SD card. So what I did though is I did a little further research and I found that this is now available on a Raspberry Pi Zero. So it's a small form factor and there is a company called Commodore Forever. Great guys by the way you need to check them out at Commodore Forever and they had a hat that would fit on top of the Raspberry Pi Zero to create a Pi 1541. And I have that device connected right here. It's uh, working well. It's got a little uh, screen right here so I can see what images I'm loading. We've got a little speaker here. But what I thought I would do is, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the operation of the Pi 1541. What I'm going to do is show you my process for getting that thing put together. I was surprised it was an easier process than I thought. There is some soldering involved, however. So if you don't know how to solder, uh, you might want to get somebody who can. The only soldering that's really involved is you need to do some header pins on the Raspberry Pi Zero. The hat itself from Commodore Forever comes together completely assembled and they did a fine job with that. So again, shout out to them for having a wonderful device to use. So without further ado, take a look at this video and let's learn how I put it together. Oh wait, but before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button below because you're going to want to know when chapter three comes out because that's when I'm really going to use the Pi 1541 and integrate it with the Commodore Plus 4 so you can actually see it operate and how we use it. So now without further ado, let's get that Pi 1541 put together. Okay, so I know I have a Raspberry Pi Zero in this box of physical computing devices somewhere. So let's, uh, let's keep searching. There we go. This is the one I need. And if I remember, there is a header pin in this package as well. Let me pull this out and let's take a look. Bad news is the Raspberry Pi is in a case. So I will need to remove it from the case. This is a Raspberry Pi I've had for a while that I've decided I uh, didn't know what to do with. So this is the perfect project. The next thing to do was to grab all of the equipment I needed for the soldering station. And then I had a visitor from a friend. Can they see me now? Yeah, lower. Lower? There you go, now you're in. Punch that in. You will not, really? It'll be in the video, yeah. yeah okay. Oh no, I was thinking about Biden, won't they? Oh, Biden alert. <laughs> oh, no. You're going like, to lose people, aren't you? And I'm sure I'm not going to lose people because of that. I'm sure it will be for other reasons. So then the next step was to go ahead and open up the Pi 1541 package from the Commodore Forever folks. Again, make sure you check out CommodoreForever.net to find out how you can get your own copy of the Pi 1541 for the Raspberry Pi Zero. As I mentioned, everything is already put together and it comes as a hat. So what happens is once we solder our header pins to the device, then we'll just plug it right on top. You'll see that we have these buttons right here that will control which cartridge images we have selected. And we'll do that in another demonstration, probably during the chapter three session of working with the Commodore Plus 4. 
Okay, I mentioned earlier that the Raspberry Pi Zero I had was in a case. Need to take it out of the case. Just a couple of screws will take care of that. Get all these pieces out of the way. We won't need these. And I will not be using this case and cannot use this case for the Pi 1541. We'll be talking about a case a little bit later on down the road. So this is the Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, this is an older Raspberry Pi Zero that's not a Wi-Fi enabled version. Fumbling around here a little bit and here is the header pins or the connector for the header pins. And you'll also see that uh, I need to solder those header pins in and I have those right here. And you put the short end into the Raspberry Pi Zero, making sure that the long end is facing up. Make sure you put this on the correct side too. That will cause you no end of issues if you do not. All right, now that the header pins are kind of in there, lined up and everything looks like it's ready to go, it is time to solder. One thing that doesn't come with your Pi 1541 is a connector cable, a serial connector cable to be specific, and you need this six pin connector. And I found these connectors online. I'll put a link in the video description. And what I need to do now is break these apart, add some wires, solder those wires to the connectors, and then reassemble the whole thing. So we'll take a look as I do that in the next step. The key to making custom cables is to ensure that every wire, every internal wire is exactly the same length. And that gets really difficult because if you make a mistake on one, you trim something too short, you strip the wire too short in an area, and then you cut it to readjustment can really cause a disaster. The good news is wiring these DIN connectors, these six pin DIN connectors is pretty easy. It really is a numbers to numbers game. As you can see here on this diagram provided by the c64.org website, it's pin one to pin one, pin two to pin two. You kind of get the idea. So I'll just go ahead and start soldering connections to wires and to pins. Before you put the connector covers back on, I always recommend you break out your multimeter and run a continuity check between the pins on each end. So you wanna check pin one with pin one, pin one with pin two, so on and so forth. We have to give credit where credit is due. I mentioned that the folks over at Commodore Forever provide the software in a package that you can use on the Pi 1541. However, this is a project that originated by Steve White and he has a website where he hosts the Pi 1541 original software. It is very comprehensive. It gives you all the information you want to know about the project. I really recommend you check it out. But again, what the Commodore Forever folks did for us is simply take that package by Steve White and make the modifications to the configuration file so that it would work out of the box with our Pi 1541 for the Raspberry Pi Zero. Once you download the package, you simply need to right click on the file and extract it. The great thing about this is you just simply copy everything that you extracted onto the root of an SD card, just like I'm going to show you right here. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a neat thing that there's no Linux distribution. This is bare metal software, which means it's working directly with the hardware on the Raspberry Pi without an operating system built in. 
Now, you can also move your software to the device while you have it plugged in. So if you have uh, ROM files or .prg files, cartridge files, bin files, you can move all those into the 1541 directory and that will allow those bits of software to be visible to the Commodore computer that this device is connected to. In my case, that will be a Commodore plus four. So I'll move a couple of plus four program files over to that directory. And once we have everything moved, then we simply need to eject the micro SD card from our computer, and then we'll get it ready to insert into the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now that we have our SD card prepared, it's time to insert it into the Raspberry Pi Zero. You'll see that I already have the Pi 1541 hat installed on the Raspberry Pi Zero. We'll take our micro SD card and have the pins point down towards the Raspberry Pi card. Insert that. Now we need to apply some power and that's just typical uh, USB power, uh, five volts. And I've got this plugged into a little wall wart charger. And now we're gonna plug this in and watch how quickly this will boot up. Remember when I said it will boot up almost as quickly as a plus four? There you go. You'll see that we have our controls on the side. They are a little confusing. We'll take some time to learn about those and how those work in our plus four chapter three. But you can see that I can cycle through the available images and software. And now that we're done, we can take off the protective peeling. I don't have to worry that the device will get scratched. I'm very pleased with the way this has turned out, and I'm really looking forward to giving it a shot. It's very simple to connect it to your plus four. You've got a couple of things you need to do. First of all, you have the serial connector here. You'll need a serial cable, which is what I created in the video. I, I patched my own together. You can buy those and there'll be a link below to where you can find those on eBay. And then also you need to apply power to the Raspberry Pi Zero. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so now that we've got the Pi 1541 connected, let's check it and see if it's working. So the first thing we need to do is hit F3 for a directory. You see we have our directory, so that's a good sign right there. And then you'll also see that the folks over at Commodore Forever have done a wonderful job pre-preparing the entire package for you that you need to drop onto the SD card that goes into the Raspberry Pi to include the menuing system that's pretty common with these SDIEC uh, devices, this FB, uh, menuing system. So on this device, we have a menuing system for every Commodore computer. For the plus four though, you're going to want to use the FB16. So what I'm going to do is do the deload. And don't worry if you don't understand this, that's in chapter three, which is the next episode, which have I reminded you to hit subscribe and notification? Yeah, I've done that. Okay. So deload uh, here, and then we're going to type FB16. And then you'll see it will load and uh, again, cycle accurate. It, it will take as long to load from this as it would have taken from a 1541. So luckily this is a small package and we're gonna hit run. And then you'll see my menu, menu, menuing system pop up. I can go to my plus four directory. I can scroll down and you'll see I have other directories that contain all kinds of fun things. So let me go ahead and, and uh, grab games here. And let's go ahead and grab pack pack which is a Pac-Man clone. So now this is where, this is a good thing and a bad thing. It's gonna take as long as it would take on the 1541 to load from the Pi 1541. So let's take a little nap, shall we? And we're back. So let's get a little volume here. So you can see everything loaded just as it should. Uh, we could go ahead and start playing the game if we wanted to. I can go ahead and hit the space bar and that should load the game. And now there we go. So we can see that our Pi 1541 is working as it should. And remember now to hit subscribe one more time. I'm reminding you again, because in chapter three that's coming up in our user's manual, we're gonna talk about how to use tapes and drives uh, with the Commodore Plus 4, and you're going to want to learn about those commands. And uh, again, we're taking a modern spin. We're, we're using upgraded devices. And then also, the folks over at Commodore Forever were nice enough to send me a Wi-Fi modem. I'm looking forward to trying that on this device. So we've got a lot ahead, and I hope that you will continue to follow the journey with me. And let me know if you have any comments. Put those down below. And again, check out the website at stephencombs.com for all the companion blog posts. So thanks for watching.